Hi everyone, it's Dana with Deep Thoughts with Dana. And yes, I have a super important announcement for you guys. First, I'm going to share my personal testimony with you. Then I'm going to make my announcement and then I have a request, okay? In your readings, both general and personal, I try to motivate everyone to reach their highest potential, to listen to your intuition because your intuition is spirit guiding you, and to never settle for less than the fire that burns in your chest. Most of you don't know how I got here, so here's a brief history. Okay, so I've always been a businesswoman, right? And I've always made really good money. I sell real estate, or I used to anyway. However, I had a fire that burned in my chest, something that I just couldn't explain. I wanted to help people. I had this overwhelming need to help people. And I wanted to help people in a way that I just, I, I didn't understand how to do. It was a throbbing, burning fire in my chest. And I felt like I was being called to do something extraordinary. And, you know, I ignored that for a long, long time. Most of my adult life, actually. So as the fire grew, the calling was just undeniable. I mean, it was all consuming and I knew that I had to do something about it, but I didn't know what to do. You know, I had to keep my job because I have bills to pay and a life to lead, right? I was successful. And so I'm, I was very busy, super busy all the time. So as I started to really contemplate and understand this, this weird calling that I had, I began to realize that if I was going to be true to myself, because, you know, you can't be true. If you can't be true to yourself, you can't be true to anyone else, right? If I was going to be true to myself, I needed to go all in. So I did. I quit my job, left all the money on the table, and I didn't know what I was supposed to do or how I was going to get there. But I knew I was supposed to be doing something. So yes, I quit my job and I waited. As the days turned into weeks and into months, I exhausted all of the resources that I had stockpiled to live on. So I started driving Lyft and Uber to pay my basic bills. And I can't tell you how many bagged salads that I've eaten. I was so broke that I would buy a $4 bag of salad at the grocery store and eat half for lunch and half for dinner. And if I was lucky, I could throw some ramen noodles in there too. You know, there was even several times when my own children actually paid my rent, which just, I can't, I can't express enough gratitude to them for supporting me in this quest that I have. So everybody thought I was crazy. You know, my family thought I had lost my freaking mind. I've always been a hard worker and a go-getter and a hustler. I'm a Taurus, right? Nobody's ever paid my way before. So that was hard for me. My ego took a huge hit. I mean, huge. And nobody could understand what I was doing. Not even me. So I took the journey of the fool card, right? I sold or gave away almost everything that I owned. I put the rest of my stuff in storage and I only took the bare necessities, necessities that I needed to live and I rented a room and I waited. That's a big thing here in Colorado because the cost of living is so exorbitantly expensive that full-grown adults, grown people, three and four of them live in a house because, I mean, rent for a house out here, I'm not kidding you, $2,500 a month for an average not-so-awesome house. So anyway, so I rented a room and um, put all of my stuff in storage, right? And I was so humbled. I mean, so humbled you can't even imagine how humbled I was, right? <laughs> so humbled. So I went from being very comfortable to being, you know, almost homeless, actually, in a matter of months. But I didn't care because I knew I was being called to do something, to touch people's lives in a way that I didn't even understand. So one day, so I'm, I'm, I'm waiting, right? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fill all of my cups. I'm trying to do the legwork. I'm, I'm manifesting, right? I got the, the wands, which is the spirit and the fire in my chest. I got the pentacles going on, the legwork, doing the work underneath everything. I have the cups, right? I'm trying to consume it. I'm trying to be 
it, even though I didn't know what I was trying to be. And I had the swords energy, right? The air energy going on because, um, you know, that's, that's the part that, that does the, the, the mind work, right? Uh, researching, reading, learning, all of that good stuff. And I was like all in, all in, and I was manifesting something. I didn't know what, but I was manifesting something in my life. So skip forward a little bit. So due to a good old broken heart from a karmic love relationship, uh, one day I hopped on YouTube looking for a tarot card reader and an astrologer that I followed for years, right? Not like like religiously, but yeah, I would check in every now and uh, every now and then from time to time just to see what she had to say about things. And she was always just right on point, right? Her name's Lisa Divini, by the way. Well, I went there one day because my heart was broken and she was gone, just gone. Her page was shut down and she was nowhere to be found. And I was just super disappointed because, you know, she always gave me like hope and inspiration. You know how the general tarot card readings go. So I began scrolling through the suggested videos down at the bottom of, you know, her channel. And that's when I discovered the world of tarot card readings on YouTube. I had no idea such a thing even existed. I was just blown away. So for about two weeks, all I did was watch tarot card readings as much as I possibly could. And I studied YouTube like a college course. And I decided to, to put up my own YouTube channel. And since that moment, my life has literally exploded in front of my eyes. And I know this was the path that was leading me to where I needed to be. Not necessarily YouTube, you know, but tarot cards. I've always read tarot cards. When I was 16 years old, I left home, right? And I stayed with a biker gang with whom I had attachments through a, th through a friend's father, right? And by the way, I'm as, as far away from being a biker as you can possibly be. I don't even like to be on bikes, right? But I have much love for the biker community because they took me in and they took care of me and they they helped me to 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 move on in my life. So anyway, one of the members was a tarot card reader. She introduced me to tarot cards and ever since then I've had a love affair with tarot, the metaphysical and the spiritual aspects of life. So I started a YouTube channel and I threw up a video, totally not expecting anything from it. I'm telling you, my first video that I put up, if you go back in my channel and look at the very first video I posted, I was literally balancing my phone camera on a protein shake container. You know, those big fat containers that you get protein shakes um, from the health food store. So I had this protein shake container and I balanced my phone on it with a rock and I threw up my first YouTube video. Totally not expecting anything from it, right? I just thought, you know, I, I don't know why, but uh, I'm going to do this. And lo and behold, here I am with 20,000 subscribers in six months, which is nothing, nothing in the grand scheme of things. But, you know, since late October to now, I have almost 20,000 subscribers and um, reading tarot cards full time, not only for YouTube subscribers, but for the general public at large all day, every day, right? right? Because I know how to market myself because I used to sell real estate. And if you don't know how to market yourself as a real estate agent, you're going to starve, right? Not really market myself, but just put myself out there on the internet, right? And before I knew it, my phone was ringing off from the general public at large, in addition to the discounted readings that I do for the YouTube crew, right? My YouTube subscribers. So, you know, some people think it's silly, but um, with tarot cards, I feel like I help people to understand their journey. And that's huge for me because for me, the meaning of life is to help others through this journey of being alive on this planet. I believe that we're all here at different stages, and I believe that, the, that humanity needs to hold hands and help each other through this journey instead of being divided and conflicted, right? That's a real thing for me. So I really feel like I help people to understand their journey, their own psychic abilities, and I feel like I help people to have purpose and direction in their life, and, and this is what my calling is. With every fiber of my being, I believe I am exactly where I am supposed to be at this point in my journey. Things have taken a financial upswing, but I'm nowhere near where I used to be. 
And you know what? I'm 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 really I'm really good with it. I'm really good with it because although I might I might not be high rolling, I'm so happy. From the inner core of my being, I am so happy. The moral of this story is to never, ever ignore your calling. And if you are being led or called to do something in your life, anything, if your passion is baking cupcakes, but you're an accountant right now, follow your passion, bake cupcakes, right? Even a simple job change, that voice that you hear, that burning in your chest, that's your intuition. And your intuition is spirit trying to guide you. It may sound crazy and it may seem completely unattainable, but I'm here to tell you that if you submit to being used by source to do whatever it is that you're being called to do, I promise you that you will not be left to starve. You might eat bagged salads for a couple of months, but you will not be left to starve. Spirit has your back when you follow your calling. If there's something that you want to do, even if you don't really know what that is, manifest it into your life. Just like the magician in the tarot deck, use all four elements, water, air, fire, and earth, and and manifest it into your life. And it will come to you. It's not going to be easy. And it very well may be a struggle. But struggle is what builds us from the inside out. Pursue your dreams because that fire in your chest is spirit calling you into being your highest self. You may not know how many lives you're going to touch, but I assure you, if you're walking in the will of the universe, they will use you to help the people that need you, whether you realize it or not. And there will be people to help you along the way. And you may not ever even know how they've helped you, but they will. A hand up, a leg up, a, a, a conversation. You never ever know who is going to intervene in your life. So be kind, spread the love, listen to your intuition, follow your heart. You can accomplish anything that you set your mind to. Whew, all of that, my friends, for this announcement. Guess what? I have been picked up for a 10 series radio show on a satellite radio station called National Broadcasting Radio FM. That's NBR FM forward slash Studio One, because that is where I'm going to be, Studio One. So they initially contacted me because of my presence on the internet, and they asked me to come on to do a quick eight-minute interview about who I am and what I do. Not that I'm anything special. I think they were just really looking to feel some airtime, honestly. But people liked it, and a lot of you YouTubers called in to encourage them to have me back. And they did. They asked me back for a 30-minute spot, and that is attached to the end of this announcement if you'd like to listen to it. So after that 30-minute spot where I talked about tarot cards and stuff, they called me a couple of days later and said that I've been picked up by a sponsor, and they'd like to do a series of 10 30-minute radio shows as a trial to see if this may grow into something bigger, right? The objective is to be picked up by bigger sponsors and potentially be syndicated with the long distance thought of some kind of TV show. I don't know how they would make a TV show out of little old me, but nevertheless, that's what they said their long distance uh, goal is. So my friends, this leads me to this. I need your help. I have some ex ex I have some expenses pertaining to this radio show, but I don't know how I'm going to pay it. <laughs> the show in total is going to cost ten thousand dollars. They're going to send a videographer out out uh, to my location. They're going to do a real deal TV commercial, and um, the cost of airtime and everything else that goes into producing a radio show is going to cost ten thousand dollars. Now the sponsor is picking up eight thousand dollars of this, but 
I have to have some skin in the game and I have to pay the other 2000 and I don't know how I'm going to do that. That's literally all the money in the world that I have. It's my bill money to pay my car payment, my rent, my utilities. But I committed to this show. I mean, how could I not, right? I am stepping out in faith once again on the fool's journey to pursue this wheel of fortune that's turning in my favor. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity and there's no way I'm not going to take it. I don't know how it's all gonna work out. I don't know how I'm going to pay for my portion of the show and my bills. So I'm, I'm, I'm led, honestly, to ask you to help me. If you can donate anything to this cause, please do so. I have never, ever asked you guys for money. I see a lot of tarot card readers that ask for donations and stuff like that. No, I have never asked for money for my YouTube channel. Not only that, but I give you guys like 50% off readings. Everybody else in the world pays $100 to $150 for my readings, and I give them to you for 50 So not only have I never asked you guys for anything, but I give to you um, freely, right? So if you can help me at all, please consider it, right? If you can donate anything to this cause, please do. $1, $5, $10, $20, $100, $1,000. Whatever is okay with you is okay with me. There's a link in the box below where you can send it. Any amount will help me. Any amount at all. And if you don't feel comfortable donating, because I don't feel comfortable asking you to donate, but if you don't feel comfortable donating, schedule a reading if you need one. You can schedule a reading a year down the road, right? If, if, and I'm more than willing to work for the money that I need. I'm a Taurus, right? I'll work for the money. I just need the money now. <laughs> if you can help me in any way at all, donating to the cause, purchasing a reading, I will be eternally grateful. And I promise no matter what comes down the road, I will always be loyal to you like you are loyal to me. I will always, always, always honor my $50 YouTube readings. Like I said, I'm stepping out in faith because I believe that this is my destiny at this particular juncture in the journey. And I know spirit has my back. And this request for help is me manifesting this into my life. So if you can, if you're able and willing, please either donate with the link below or schedule a reading. What an amazing story this is going to be. Thank you, my friends, and as always, namaste. Now here's the radio show that got me the contract. If you'd like to listen, stand by. Broadcasting from the financial capital of the world, this is NBRFM, New York City. Time now to say hello to our next guest, Dana Martin. Hello, Dana. Hi, Sal. How are you? I'm doing just great. Dana is a psychic tarot card reader, and uh, her business is Deep Thoughts with Dana. Uh, and Dana, uh, where, where is your business located? I'm in Denver, Colorado. Excellent. But uh, yeah. as, as I understand it, uh, you, you serve a global community through your website. Oh, I do. I have given tarot card readings on every continent and almost every country except for Saudi Arabia and China. Oh, wow. That's, that's quite, quite reach you have there, uh, Dana. Uh, what, what's your website address so people uh, could know where to look you up? It's deepthoughtswithdana.com. Very good. And that's all one string, deepthoughtswithdana, D-A-N-A dot com. So uh, tell us a little bit uh, uh, about uh, what, you, what you do there. I mean, if you're doing it over the Internet, how do they flip the cards? Um, well, first of all, that's a misconception. Uh, usually tarot card readers don't like anybody to touch their cards because it's an energy transfer, right? And my cards are mine just like a blankie would be to a kid, right? These are my cards. And if we're going face-to-face, -face, what I will do is put my feet on your feet so I can feel your energy. Um, but I really don't like people to touch my cards, and most tarot readers don't like somebody else to touch their cards. But what, how I work, and that's the, the unexplainable thing of things, is, is it's, an, it's an energy transfer. Like you and I speaking on the phone right now, if we were having an intimate conversation, I would be shuffling the cards as we're talking, and then I will do my, my, my prayer, which I do, and lay out your cards. And that energy transfer is what happens 
um, over the phone. So in other words, you'd be picking up my vibes from what I'm speaking to you on the telephone. Yes. And I'm picking them up right now. I'm actually shuffling tarot cards as we speak, Sal. And you have some interesting things going on in your life. Well, <laughs> as long as the death card doesn't come up, Dana, <laughs> I'm good the with death, it. The, the death card is actually a really, really good card to have. It's one of my very favorite cards, and it doesn't necessarily mean death. but. Oh. Yeah, it's a good card. It's an interesting card. You want me to explain it to you? Sure. I'd, I'd like to know what it means. If it doesn't mean death, what does it mean? Right, right. Well, first of all, we have to identify death with the card of Scorpio, right? Because Scorpios are how, in it's, okay, well, let me back up. So death is a card of endings and change, transformation, and transition in your life. It's about a personal transformation and doing some inner purging. So when the death card comes out, it means that one life cycle is ending and a new life cycle is beginning for you. Your life is about to change. You're about to have some transformation and some transition of which you will, you will have some inner purging and a personal transformation that will lead you into this next cycle of your life. So the death card is actually a really good card to have, and it is associated with the zodiac sign of Scorpio because Scorpio represents change and transition as far as the zodiac is concerned. So the death card's a really good card to have. Okay, good. And uh, if you say you're uh, picking up my vibes and you're flipping my cards, if you want to tell me the good stuff on the air, fine. Tell me the bad stuff when we finish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want me to say anything on the air, that's for sure. But I can tell you that you have some really good opportunities coming up for yourself in the future. That's good. All right. Well, let, let's not talk about me. Let's talk about tarot. <laughs> uh, tell us okay. about this. How did this uh, uh, come into practice? Has this been going on for centuries now, right? Oh, well, yeah, tarot's, tarot is ancient. It's ancient. The first recorded history of tarot surfaced in the 15th century, but the, the you know, man has always sought intervention of the divine in their life, and from all corners of the earth and documented recorded history, people have used stones and sticks and bones and rocks and dice and cards to seek the will of the divine in their life, right? Because uh, that's ultimately what we want. When you go to your quiet place to seek inner wisdom, to make decisions about your life, right? Most people call on some kind of higher power. Most people do. Mm -hmm. There's people out there who are their own higher power, and I understand that as well. So, you know, people have been calling in supernatural forces to guide some of their most important life decisions from the beginning of time. And that's what tarot does. It, it gives you confirmation of your own intuition, first and foremost. And it can help you understand why the things are the way that they are in their life, how others feel. And, of course, you know, everybody wants to know the foresight or what's ahead, the ultimate outcome of everything. Right. So, you know, people have been doing this since the beginning of time, and tarot has honestly um, won and lost kingdoms in throughout, throughout recorded history. So this is really a way of uh, getting in touch with your spiritual side, even if you don't consider yourself necessarily a spiritual person. Absolutely, and it's in, yeah, absolutely, because, you know, I'm personally, I'm an agnostic, because all I know is that nobody knows 100% for sure what the whole story is, right? So you don't have to be a spiritual person. It's really more about, see, everybody is psychic, Sal. Everybody has psychic abilities. There's just people who are more advanced psychically than other people are. And and the the cards pull on your own psychic abilities. They, mm -hmm. they truly do. And, you know, so there's not a big, huge mystical thing about it. It's actually very scientific. It's very scientific in the way that it's structured and laid out. And the, 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 the mystery of it is the psychic ability to be able to channel somebody else's energy into the cards, and that's where the real mystery comes in. Otherwise, it's very straightforward, very analytical. Well, now, tell us about the, the tarot deck uh, uh, and, and how that's uh, structured and uh, uh, what, what the cards, uh, what kind of categories they fall into. Okay, well, the, the, the tarot deck is, like I said, very scientific in structure. They follow an algorithm of definitions. The structure of the tarot is similar to that of a pack of playing cards, and that's kind of sort of where people are thinking that the history of tarot comes from, from the Boudins that came out of the Middle East, and it's 
it's rooted in pre-Torah history. But the, the Torah has two houses, and the major arcana and the minor arcana. The word arcana literally means mysteries. So the tarot deck is set up into two distinct houses, one of the major mysteries of life and one of the minor mysteries of life. So you have the major arcana. The major arcana are the major mysteries, and they're set in a chronological sequence of 21 karmic life lessons that we all must learn in order to ascend to a new level of enlightenment, a new level of development in our life. Moving on to the next lesson in order, the chronological order, to begin a new life cycle and a new chapter. So these 21 life lessons um, are, are when they surface in your reading. This is like guidance from source, right? of something that you need to work on in your life or something that you're being rewarded for because you've already mastered that current life lesson. And, you know, the major arcana are attached to planets and zodiac signs with corresponding numerology, but, you know, this explanation would take an entirely different show. So if the listeners would like to hear more on that, you know, you guys make sure that you contact the show and let them know that you want me to come back. Yeah. So we... So we have the 20, you want me to keep going? Sure, keep going. Okay, so we have the 21 major arcana, right? Plus a a 22nd card called the fool card, which represents the number zero. The fool represents beginnings and endings, right? So it's zero because it has no beginning and it has no ending, kind of like our spiritual journey. Spirituality is a never-ending and who knows where we all came from, right? It's just a constant thing. So we have the 21, 22 major arcana, which includes the fool card, which are, which are the karmic life lessons, right? Like the death card, for instance. When the death card comes out, that indicates that you are either going through some kind of transformation in your life or you need to go through some kind of transformation in your life, which is a life lesson, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so then to, get to, that minor... next, to get to that next level, you have to have a transition. Right, exactly. Okay. That's right. exactly right. That's right. So in the minor arcana, it, that's the portion of the tarot that resembles an actual playing deck. I can actually give you a tarot card reading with an, a, just a regular old playing deck. It's four suits of 14 cards representing the four elements of the planet, right? Water, earth, fire, and air. And they're grouped into suits of the zodiac sign that represents their elemental energy, right? Water, earth, fire, and air. And they each have a planet and numerology attached to it as well. These cards are the characters and the energies that are in our life. Each of these cards has two definitions, two dual meanings, and this is where the algorithm and the scientific part of it comes into play. So each card has each card represents a personality. Each card has two different definitions or dual meanings. So all 14 cards of any particular suit, being water, fire, earth, and air, um, have, have two meanings, which is 28 specific definitions attached to that particular suit. And that's where the algorithm comes in, right? So when I lay these cards out for you, I know what they're saying based on what their assigned definitions are. And I don't care what kind of tarot reader you are, where you learned how to read tarot, it is what it is. The hermit card, for instance, or let's go back to death, since that seems to be your favorite. The death card. <laughs> Not necessarily, but it's the one <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> when that comes out in a reading, it means endings, change, transformation, and transition. Resistance to change, a personal transformation, and inner purging. And I don't care what sequence they come out in, upside down, forwards, backwards, left or right, that's what the card means. Mm -hmm. So by assigning the characteristics of the card that comes out around it, that's how you determine what definition to assign to that card at that particular time in the reading. So let me jump, just let me jump for a minute. So in other words, the the layout of the cards is just as important as each individual card. It's kind of like if you're doing horoscopes, uh, the way the planets line up at the time of your birth. Um, Yes, it's a lot like that. It's a sequence, right? But I read tarot a little bit differently than a lot of other tarot card readers will read it. A lot of other tarot card readers will lay down a card 
and tell you about this death card, that what's going on in your life. When I string my cards together, and, you know, I have a huge YouTube channel, and anybody out there can hop on. It's Deep Thoughts with Dana on YouTube. And you can see the difference between the way that I read cards and the way a lot of, a lot of other people read cards because my cards sew together a story. And, and so the positioning of my cards is super important because I tie one card to the next card to the next card, to the next card. Just for example, I have five cards laid out here. And these aren't necessarily your cards, Sal, okay, because I've been shuffling and and I've been, you know, my energy has been up elsewhere. So I have the Princess of Swords. This Princess of Swords tells me that somebody is contemplating a plan, right? They're formulating a thought pattern, and they're getting ready to implement decisions in their life. This Princess of Swords is followed by this Four of Cups. Four of Cups means reevaluation and contemplation, followed by the Hermit, which is soul searching, introspection, seeking inner guidance, followed by Judgment, which is a decision, followed by the Devil, the Devil card. Okay, this Devil card is about is about um, attachments, restrictions, addictions, and sexuality in your life. So this string of cards right here tells me this story. Somebody is formulating a thought pattern to make a decision. Four of Cups comes in and says that this person is contemplating and reevaluating something in their life, so much so that they have to go inside to their quiet place and do some soul searching and some introspection to get guidance, personal guidance, to make this decision. So the judgment card comes out next. This is about judgment rebirth, and absolution to a situation. This is the decision that you were formulating in this first card with the Princess of Swords. So you go into the hermit mode and you think about things and you, and you toss things around, right? You come out on the other side with a very black and white concrete decision, an absolution to the situation that is going to change the trajectory of your life. What is this decision about? This decision is about this devil card right here. The devil card, the card of Capricorn, this devil card is about this person trying to make a decision about some kind of restrictive attachment that they have in their life. And this decision is based on that. And then if we go on and I keep laying out, I lay out 15 cards per spread, and then I do clarifying cards on top of that. So as I lay out five more, the story will continue. As I lay out five more, the story will continue. So and it's it's kind out. of like the landscape of cards. As each card comes out, it like plays off the previous sequence. For me, not for a lot of other people, but for me, that's how I read cards. Okay. You know what? I think this is a good point now then uh, to take a brief break. We're going to go for two minutes and then we'll come back and then we'll do more. And uh, you could either talk about the cards you've been flipping there or maybe you might want to tell us about uh, some of the folks uh, uh, you've worked with and uh, give us some anecdotes of uh, uh, some of the readings you've done. It's your call, okay? Okay, you bet. Thanks. All right, and uh, we'll be back right after this. Broadcasting from the financial capital of the world, this is NBRFM, New York City. And we're back with Dana Martin, psychic tarot card reader, Deep Thoughts with Dana. That's her website, and we're talking about uh, tarot cards and uh, uh, various readings and so forth. And uh, uh, Dana, we were talking before the break, you were laying out some cards there, and you are explaining that the, the geography of the reading, uh, if I'm not describing it uh, perfectly, correct me, but as, as the cards get added on, it, it adds uh, more layers uh, to what you're seeing. Is that, is that close to what you were saying? You are so on point, Sal. That's exactly right. Okay. Well, that's because I'm listening to you, Dana. I'm always <laughs> listening. All right. So then, uh, so then this is what you do, and you, you say that uh, uh, folks can contact you through your uh, website. They could see you on your YouTube channel, too. And, uh, you know, uh, for, get a sense uh, just from speaking with them. I guess it's the, where the psychic uh, comes in uh, that uh, you would uh, turn these cards and, and get a sense of where these people are at in their lives. That's right. That's right. How they feel, what's going on, and what's coming down the road should you follow the advice of the cards. Very good. So now let me ask you a question here before we get into some uh, anecdotes. Uh, people that, uh, that, that want a tarot reading, what should they expect from, from a reading? 
Well, um, as an intuitive empath, I will be the conduit for your energy transfer into the cards through just casual conversation, right? You don't even have to tell me really what's going on if you don't want to. And through casual conversation, um, I can produce a personal tarot card reading specialized just for you, just for your situation. I can, I can transfer your subconscious mind into the cards to see, to, to, to see what's really going on inside your head and inside your life. Because a lot of people who come to me for a tarot card reading don't even really understand what's going on themselves. So the reading gives people, number one, confirmation of their own intuition. Number two, an understanding of the situation from a perspective that perhaps they may not have considered before. Number three, it really highlights how other people feel in the situation because I get a lot of requests for business readings. I read for business people all over the world that really make serious decisions based on these tarot card readings, but they would never, ever admit that they're getting a tarot card reading, right? Um, I lost my train of thought, Sal. So, oh, yes, what to expect. So I'll channel your energy into these cards, right? And it will tell a story. And and the things that come out in the cards um, may already be aware of, but you may not be aware of. And that's one of the important things that the tarot, you know, the cards don't lie, your subconscious mind doesn't lie, and if you believe in a higher power that I'm connecting with, that doesn't lie either. So sometimes information that's revealed in a reading is really less than pleasant. It's not all rainbows and unicorns, right? So sometimes the message isn't what you want to hear, so you have to be prepared for the truth when you sit down with a real tarot card reader Mm -hmm. because these cards are going to tell you things that um, you might not want to hear, honestly. Yeah, and 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 what are some of the things that you should not expect if if you're going to have a, a tarot card reading? Are there some uh, things that uh, just aren't going to happen in any way, shape, or form? Um, well, yeah, the tarot card the, the cards don't answer yes or no questions. Now you have to understand each reader is so uniquely different. Okay, but for me, my cards I don't answer yes or no questions. Am I going to get this job? Yes or no. They don't answer yes or no questions, right? And they don't, number one, like I said, they don't fib, right? They tell the truth. And um, for me, personally, I don't intentionally channel people who have passed on. Sometimes they do surface in a reading, um, but I don't intentionally do that. There's a lot of psychics out there who are mediums who will tap into people who have passed on, but I don't mess with anything in that realm in any way whatsoever, um, can you tell yeah, us? Can you tell us why why that is? I mean, it's just a, a decision you've made for yourself. Yeah, it's just a decision that I've made for myself because um, I do have the ability to do that, but I don't want to do that because it becomes as a, as an empath, it becomes an overwhelming kind of thing, and I don't want to spend my days. Being, there's other people out there who can do that a lot better than I do, right? There's just a lot of people out there, and it's just not something that I'm comfortable with, mm-hmm. nor am I comfortable with black magic in any way whatsoever. And I've had people call me for readings that are into black magic, and I pick up on that the first word out of your mouth. I can pick up on that energy, and it just, I, I can't do it. It just shuts me down. I am all about white, light, hope, peace harmony, love, and I want to use my gift for the embetterment of the human journey, and I'm not into casting spells or helping people to get revenge or helping people to, um, you know, create magic things. I'm just and, that, and, and, that's what, that. and that's what you feel constitutes black magic, spells, and so forth, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yes. Anything that uses the gifting for self-benefit is black magic. Okay. So, Dana, uh, if you could uh, uh, tell us uh, a story about uh, someone uh, uh, you gave a reading to, and uh, uh, let's say uh, they, they were happily surprised by the outcome. Right. Well, well, uh, let me tell you about, about James. <clears throat> James, and James, if you're listening, because I put this all over YouTube, so James, if you're listening, this is about you. So James calls me, right? And he's uh, an older gentleman, and he lives in Tennessee. And... Um, 
he wanted to know what's coming down the road for him. His wife had passed away three years earlier, and he felt really, really guilty about moving on with his life, right? Because they were married for like 42 years, and, you know, they were a teen, and she passed on, and he just could not move on, right? But he wanted to. He felt the time was right. So we do his his reading, and um, in the middle of his reading, and like I said, I don't intentionally channel those who have passed on, but sometimes they surface, and I have no control over that, right? So in the middle of his reading, um, his wife, who was a Pisces, who was represented by the high priestess in this reading, um, she came through, and the message of the reading was that he needs to move on and that she was giving her blessing to him and that she loves him deeply and she appreciates um, the time that he has taken to mourn her loss, but that it's time for him to move on. It's time for him to take those Tai Chi classes, and it's time for him to get out and start start mingling with people, and that she that it was hurting her heart to see him sitting alone, and it was time for him to go on. So that was a really poignant reading. That was, And we did not expect that to happen. He just wanted to know what was coming down the road, right? Yeah. And then we had this really deep, serious, I mean, it made me cry. And it was, it was, it was, it was a very serious reading. On a lighthearted note, I have a guy um, out of New York, and uh, I won't say his name because he's kind of famous. So I have a guy out of New York that called me about his business dealings. Every time he has something of super important significance when it comes to money, he will call me and we'll go through the cards and see what the cards have to say. And this guy has um, made millions of dollars listening to the advice of the cards, and he has lost millions of dollars not listening to the advice of the cards. So now when he calls me, he's a regular. He calls in at least once a month. So now when he calls me, he takes the reading like Super, super serious. I mean, like he likes me to spend like two hours with him on the phone. So that's always a that's always a treat for me because he was such a skeptic in the first place, right? Sure. And then he lost a bunch of money and he came back and he's like, "Oh my God, <laughs> I'm never going to ignore that again." Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. That's... And of course, you know, people call me for love readings all the time. That's the, the, the that is the bulk of what people want to know about is their love life. And you know, back to the you know you can't you can't you know, the tarot tells the truth. I have unfortunately broken um, the news to uh, more than enough people that uh, their situation is a third-party situation and somebody's cheating on them and what they're doing and how they're doing it. And and uh, they all come back to me and they're like, wow, I would have never known that had you had not told me that. So, you know, that's a an interesting thing. It's sad, but nevertheless interesting. Sure. So I've busted a lot of people cheating. <laughs> yeah. Dana Martin, a psychic tarot card reader. Dana, I'm afraid we're out of time, but that really went very quickly. She's with Deep Thoughts with Dana. And uh, Dana, if one more time you could tell us uh, uh, your, your website and uh, that YouTube channel you refer to. Sure. It's www.deepthoughtswithdana.com. Everything that you need to know is in that website. And my YouTube channel is also Deep Thoughts with Dana. Dana, thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to speaking with you again next time. Yeah, you bet you. Thanks, Sal, and thanks, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. And uh, we'll be back with more coming up. Broadcasting from the financial capital of the world, this is NBRFM, New York City. This is you over 30 years ago. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And this is your mom when you drive her back from therapy. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Roles change without us noticing. And in your new role, we help you help. AARP gives you the information to help care for your mom so that you can have patience with her just like she did with you. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving or call 1-877-333-5885 to get practical health and wellness tips to provide even better care for your loved one. Are we there yet? Remember, visit aarp.org slash caregiving. AARP, we help you help. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council.